Hello friends, Sentinel H here and welcome back to our immersive integration tutorial series. First thing I want to say is thanks for all the support on the last immersive integration video. I couldn't believe how many views that got so quickly, so thanks you all for watching that. Now in this episode we're going to be talking about these induction chargers and capacitors in a box. <laughs> Um, so these are pretty simple things, uh, but let's go through. They're, they're, they're decently useful, you know, and uh, we're getting towards the end of immersive integration. There really isn't a whole lot in it. It's just uh, useful knickknacks and, and bits and bobs. In fact, we've probably only got one of these left before it's, uh, before it's done. So, uh, induction chargers, uh, they look like that. You can only place them like that. You can't put them on the wall or upside down or anything. They just go there. And uh, the way that they work is um, is you just step on them or throw things on them and, and they charge up. And we'll demonstrate that uh, in a minute. In order to craft these, you simply need a two treated wood planks, two treated wood slabs, and then the, L, the capacitor and coil uh, for the one that you're trying to make. Here I have the LV capacitor and the copper wire coil that makes the induction charger. However, if I was to go in and grab an electrum coil and a uh, medium voltage uh, capacitor and slot them in here, we get the MV1. The same for the HV1, just use the, uh, the bigger coil and the bigger capacitor. And that's what, that, that holds true for the capacitors and boxes as well, which basically act as handheld batteries. Um, all you need to do is place the wooden storage crate and then a capacitor of your choice in order to get that capacitor in a box. So over here, I've set up the um, the induction chargers. You can see they each have different uh, internal storages. The LV can only store 50k, uh, the MV can store 500k, and the induction charger can store 2 million. Now there's two ways to use these. Um, the first way is to just throw things on top of them and see I hit Q to throw it But when it hit the uh, induction charger it like placed in the world a little bit and it stuck itself to the the induction charger and see it's filling up Now you may be wondering how these are getting power uh, well they're getting power through these um, creative capacitors. The only way that you can put power into these induction chargers is to put a capacitor underneath them. You cannot attach um, the connectors, power connectors to these. It doesn't work. Then just right click on the thing to take your item back. There we go. Capacitor in a box. The other way of doing it is to just stand on it. So if you stand on it, it'll start charging the, the thing in, in question. It, it does appear uh, this is the MV, this is the HV, that things get charged in your inventory in order of how they're placed. So you can see that the HV capacitor was being charged a moment ago, but once I put the MV in front of it, it started getting charged. So if that's important to you, um, if you want items in your inventory to be charged at a certain, you know, this one first, then, then that one, make sure that you place them in your inventory in order because that's what these will do when you step on it. But you can always just chuck them on top and, uh, and they'll, no, I missed. And they'll just charge like that. While those are doing that, um, let's show off the capacitor in a box. All this is, is a battery. Now the way that you need, the way that you use it is, is a bit different. Now it, apparently if you've got Tinker's Construct, you can actually put these things on your weapons, which is pretty cool. Um, now the way that these work is that if you look at there, it tells you right there, right click to share power with held items. So these are used to power things that you're holding in your inventory. Kind of like the mana tablet for Botania powers the mana items. So I'm going to grab a railgun, and if you remember the railgun stores 8000 RF. Now it's not going to give power to the railgun just from sitting in the inventory. Okay, we do have to right click. Now once we right click, it starts to glow. And while it's glowing, that means that we, we can draw power out of it. So if I then go and hover over the railgun, that's when it starts drawing power, which I think is neat. It means that even you can have a bunch of these, you can have items in your inventory that take power, but it's not going to drain your batteries unless you, they're active in your hand. Um, I don't have any ammo for my railgun, um, but we'll grab some so I can test fire it just to show you. Grab some iron rods. 
Now we can test fire this. Bang. And there, it's, it's fully charged already. So, if you're going to be using the railgun extensively, I highly recommend a capacitor in a box. From uh, Inversive Integration, um, you can get quite a few shots. If you notice, you know, you're not going to get a ton of shots out of the LV one, but if you've got the resources to, to carry around an HV one, uh, you could certainly use the railgun for a very long time. So that's basically it for these capacitors in a box and uh, and these induction chargers. They're they're really not very complicated. Um, they're just you can use them in a variety of ways. So for example, if I dump this railgun and I grab uh, an empty railgun and I Q throw it onto the thing, you see that works as well. That actually looks really cool the way it places it in the world like that. And uh, I assume these are compatible with other mods uh, that have. Uh, tools that use power. Um, so yeah, they're, they're pretty useful. Uh, I've seen other mods have these same things. I think these ones look cooler. They definitely look the part. I think they match really well with immersive engineering. So very cool. Very cool. So anyway, that's basically it for this. Um, stay tuned for the next episode, which is going to be the last one, where we'll go over the other couple of things that are in the mod, uh, the immersive integration. So um, what I need to know from you guys, let me know if after that's over, uh, you want a couple videos on like how to set up production lines, because uh, I'd, I'd be that'd be pretty fun to put those together, like showing, connecting the um, machines together into uh, full scale production lines. So if you want to see something like that, um, let me know. You got a couple weeks to to decide. So uh, anyway, and after this is over, we'll go back in and we'll start to look through reactor craft and rotary craft for things that have really changed so let me know in the comments if, uh, if you're using those mods if, if you if you have uh, seen those things firsthand and experienced things that don't work uh, in my tutorials anymore let me know um, I'll ha so that I don't have to scra scrounge through all those videos because that will make the, the series take more time anyway um, I appreciate you guys thank you for watching I'm Seth Malach and I'm signing out